Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're gonna to be servicing the turbos on my 335i. Now they're still on the car, so we're gonna go ahead and get under right now. We've already dropped the subframe. If you wanna see how we did that, go ahead and check out my previous video where we did the oil pan service on this car. Now all we have to do is pull the down pipes off, get the water pump out of the way, and then we'll be able to pull the turbos down, and then we're gonna rebuild them on the bench here. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we did that. And the best part is that I got these parts from Amazon. They were sold to us by Turbo Lab of America and they arrived in under two days. So I'm really excited to try out these kits. I'm gonna put a link to them in the description below. For now, let's go straight to work on the car. Let's get these turbos off. So I was just picking stuff off of the ground here, trying to clean up, because I obviously made a big mess. And I noticed a couple things that are pretty suspect, or suspicious, whatever sus means. Uh, one is this uh, shredded drive belt here. So it looks like it, this car has definitely shredded a belt before. Not uncommon, but uh, obviously this has been stowed away for some time. And this is something I'm a little more worried about. This bolt, I recognize, this is either for the heat shields under the turbo, over the turbo, or this is to hold one of the lines in. Uh, I, I recognize it. So you'll see what I'm talking about as we take the turbos off. We'll, we'll see more of these bolts under there. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in a safe spot because uh, it clearly was just lodged somewhere and finally had the opportunity to fall down from the car. And hopefully we can find its rightful home so that we can thread it back in.
we are very close to getting these turbos off. You can see the manifolds right there, the turbos right underneath. Actually, I want to show you guys. Remember to get these upper oil pan lines. You can see it right there in the middle of the screen. That is the oil feed line, and you need to make sure that you either remove it from the turbo or from the block before you go ahead and loosen the manifolds and try to drop these turbos because obviously those are going to keep you from removing the turbo. So basically there's just a few things that you have to remove in order to get to this point. I've laid it all out here and let's go ahead and start back at the inlet pipe and the down pipe. So obviously down pipes have to come off. The front inlet pipe is going to be in the way to a lot of things. So you can see that we removed it right there, put it aside. Now after that, in order to get the boost pipe off, you're going to have to remove the intercooler. And then like I said, you're going to want to remove the boost pipe. This is just clipped onto the intercooler here and then it's got five millimeter bolts that hold the clamps that go to the uh, turbos. And then right here is the rail with the vacuum solenoids. This is held on by some E8 bolts. Now when I found that missing bolt earlier, it actually came from one of these spots here. So remember these are E8s. You're going to get that out of the way and disconnect the vacuum lines from the turbos and then from the, uh, the canisters as well. You can see that we removed the canisters as well as the expansion tank and that made a ton of room to see the manifolds. And then from the bottom side, you're going to have to remove the motor mount bracket with the motor mount on top of it. So just like Ray said, uh, this would be a great time to service your motor mounts if they're worn. Mine, I didn't really notice them being uh, all that worn or shot or anything like that. Usually they'll just separate entirely in two pieces and you'll know that you have to replace them. But we're going to go ahead and now focus on getting the turbos out. Like I said, you're going to have those t30 bolts and that's going to hold all the oil lines there's an oil line on top the feed which is held in by one there's the return line which is held in by two and then on the side here there's the coolant passages one coolant line goes in one coolant line comes out and there's just one t30 bolt that holds both of those in once you remove that there's one stacked on top of the other they're kind of like bracketed together so you're going to have to pry them off one at a time once you got all the lines loose and off, you can go ahead and move to removing the bolts here for the headers. Or I guess you could call them manifolds, uh, collectors, whatever. These are going to use a T50 to go in there. And I think you can also use like an 11 millimeter or a 12 millimeter around the outside in case you have some issues in some weird areas. But uh, we should have access to most of them from the top here with our socket. And then uh, once we get all those loose, it should just be a matter of pulling the turbos down and out. So there you go, turbos are officially removed. We have them on the floor right here, but I just wanna show you guys. The basic rundown is that you have the oil return line right here. You've got the coolant feed line up there. You've got coolant return lines that come off of the water pipe, which I have over here. And the hardest one is gonna be the oil feed. And those come from the center. You can see them right there. It's got one big old T50 bolt that holds the lines together and onto the block. So you're gonna have to pull that bolt out and then separate the lines from each other and then separate the bank two line from the block because that's how it kind of routes. And then uh, the next tricky part is that you're gonna have to remove or at least loosen the heat shields that keep the lines off of the turbos and kind of onto the block. So you can see we have the bank one heat shield on right there. All I had to do was remove the lower two bolts and the oil line, it, it gets routed behind there. So you have to slide it down and out. Over on the bank two side, it's a little more difficult because we have the inlet pipe there. So we have to work with what we've got. What I did was I fully removed all four E8 bolts 
that hold it on. You just need an extension to get the top two ones. And then when you remove the turbo, you should have everything come down together. The oil line, the upper oil line will stay on the turbo. The oil return is going to stay on the block. And then the coil lines are going to be dangling right there. So I hope this has helped you get your turbos off. Now we're going to head to the bench and we're going to rebuild them. Finally, we have the turbos out of the car cleaned up. I went ahead and removed the lines that were up here and I wiped down the entire units so that they're a little bit cleaner and going to be easier to work with here. So I'm going to put one of these aside and I'm going to show you how we can rebuild these turbos with that simple kit from Amazon that I got. This is technically considered a Mitsubishi TDO3. It's even stamped here on the turbo. So that's why the Turbo Lab of America kit is such a great choice. It's made for the TDO3. It's going to fit factory. Now, I know you could go with a rebuilt turbo that has like a larger housing, larger compressor wheel, but obviously that's going to be a little bit different price point. You're going to have to change out those components, the cartridge and such. And I've seen you can find those for around $600 on different, you know, stores and such. But as far as this car goes, we're going to stick with the factory turbos. They're, you know, really capable turbos to push up in horsepower horsepower if we need to and I don't currently have any plans to go up to six or seven hundred horsepower with this car so we'll save a couple bucks I'm going to put a link in the description to the kit that I'm using let's go ahead and get right to work on disassembling and rebuilding these turbos
So there we have it. Our turbo rebuild is 100% complete on both turbos. Testing the turbos, it looks like they work fine. Obviously, since they're new or rebuilt, you know, they, they have some wearing in to do before they'll spin as freely as a worn in turbo. But these things do spin really well. Currently, all the seals are replaced. I'm happy with everything. And the best thing about these kits is that they even come with all the O-rings for the associated coolant and the oil lines. So that's going to conclude our rebuild of the turbos. Now everything is going to have to go back in, uh, same as it came out. So I'm going to go ahead and put my head down and get back to work on this car and try to get all this work done and finished. Uh, we're going to be putting our new water pump in at the same time, and then we'll put the subframe back up, and we should be 100% good on the bottom end of this car. So that's going to conclude our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching some of this turbo rebuilding by hand. Now, I'm going to link to some of the videos by Turbo Lab of America in the description below. These are the guys that sold the kits, they developed them, and they hand machine every single kit. Now, they have some videos online to show you some additional details about rebuilding and some of the reasons why the 335i turbos fail so often so I'm gonna link those in the description like I said so check those guys out as always I hope everyone has an awesome day and we'll see you next time